Welcome back to Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists. This week on the show, we welcome in A24. That's right. Each new year brings in new directing talent. And this year, we're sitting down with the A24 Under 24 class of 2024. A24 uses a very specific type of filmmaker, usually young, very ambitious, very excited, to make not only a risky, exciting type of movie, but also a movie that requires a lot more experience than they usually have. So sit back, put your glasses on, and settle in. This is A24 Under 24 Class of 24. Let's listen in. Unbelievable. Absolutely. I'm, I, I, you know, for me, I guess I'm feeling gobsmacked that I would even get the opportunity to sit down with you guys and see you face to face because I've seen your work and I've been watching your work for a really long time. And I'm just so excited and enthralled, um, to sit down and, you know, learn a little bit more about your process and what like drives I, you. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. I don't want to cut you off, but I just realized I haven't acknowledged the artists that are in this room filming us right now. So I just want to thank Absolutely. this cameraman Everybody right here. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're a G. Mm -hmm. You're a G. Yeah, thank you I want to thank this other camera person over here. You're yeah. an absolute G and you're a legend. And, and I want to also, thank the sound people over there. Yes, and the grip. She's a she G. Yeah. That was incredible. Yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm very grateful to the women in this space as well. Absolutely. And yeah. it's so... <laughs> Um, wonderful to be here to and I I do want to agree I you took the words right out of my mouth gobsmacked and enthralled mm -hmm. were exactly the emotions that I felt walking into the space Absolutely. I felt those exact same words I felt I remember thinking wow I'm gobsmacked and then I remember thinking I'm enthralled but I yeah. felt the words it's the combination yeah, like it's so it's about being it. hit in the gob I've been smacked right in the gob for this, and I'm, I'm just so grateful to be here. It's it's really, really cool and thrilling, and at the same time, it doesn't mean anything, right? Because no. I don't care. Of course not. Of yeah. course not. I, I don't care no. about this kind of stuff. Yeah. This isn't why I'm here. But This it's, isn't yeah. why we do it. It's no. wonderful. You know, for me, I feel like uh, I think uh, before we get started, I just wanted to go around and say thank you guys. Because yeah. I guess for me, what I've been realizing is how difficult art is. You know, when they yeah. say this business That's is difficult— they're really not talking about how difficult it is to get a movie financed because that was pretty easy for us. It, they're actually talking about how difficult it is to venture within and come back from the journey with goods, you know? Yeah, that's always been my struggle, you know? Oh, finding $5 million to make a project? Yeah, not a problem. Yeah. But knowing what that project is before I make it, that's the problem. That, I'm so like that. I, like, I have 10 mil. Exactly, exactly. I because like anyone can. To be an ahead. indie filmmaker is to learn how to finance your films. And I think um, financiers and, and young directors, we are we are the new, like, I would say, like, we're the new collaboration between, like, I think back in the day you would do, like, the screenwriter and maybe the director. And now it is the director who is also the screenwriter. And we are partnering with financiers to see what they want on the screens because these studios have a mind of their own. Exactly. And we look for distribution after, right? And, it's, and we're so blessed by A24 to be given that stamp of approval by such a good studio. But that isn't always the case with a lot of filmmakers. Absolutely. Exactly. Maybe we should go around and say the uh, films that we're yeah, working we should, on that are coming out. Of course. Hi, I'm, I'm Brittle Jones, and I, um, and, and I am the writer-director of Can of Stuff. Um, it's it's a film. so beautiful. Thank you so much. And I wanted to acknowledge the films in the space. Can of Stuff is, yeah. of course... <laughs> Um, such an incredible work and I also want would be remiss if I didn't compliment your previous work uh, Brittle Jones's diary <laughs> amazing that was, what an amazing. Am that was like was so I'd say funny. it's my lady bird it was, so it was like funny. my first one yeah. that got me on the mark on the map and then I, on the mark if you would <laughs> um, it was so irreverent right you took this product mm -hmm. that had already been made Renee Zellweger film based on a book and you talked about how it made you feel your whole life because your name was similar to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was so irreverant and tongue-in-cheek and you talked directly to the camera and you talked directly to the audience. And yeah. it was Such hybrid. a good short film. Yeah. Such a good short film. It started as a short film and it's just yeah. kind of you kind of going, hi, I'm Brittle Jones. Almost like a documentary. Almost. Yeah, and I do want to yeah. say like it was funny because we had done it a long, time, a long time ago and I did address camera straight on before Fleabag 
and that mm-hmm. is yeah. something I like to say. Just we like say it in publicly. the film too. You say it in the film yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. You, you say, say you, you say, say this was I before this I the, shot this before Fleabag. Well, I say this oh, is the first time anyone's excellent. ever done this. Yeah, you pop but in I'm kind very, of green yeah. screen style. A hundred percent, yeah. And I'm very grateful for the people at South by um, for recognizing that film. I'm really grateful for that. Yeah, and then, you didn't get in, but they did recognize it. No, they right? recognized it. And um, I loved when I I love when because I you posted a video of you showing a poster to uh, somebody who worked for the yeah. uh, selection committee, and they said, "Oh, I remember that movie." Yeah, so you I'm said, so grateful for the people at South by yeah. for recognizing yeah. uh, Bridget Jones, uh, Brittle Jones's diary. And um, that's kind of what jumped me off because I, I walked into rooms with the script for Kind of Stuff and yeah. I was like, I've been recognized by South by, mm-hmm. I've been recognized by so many filmmakers on Hollywood Boulevard, I've been mm-hmm. recognized in Echo Park by so many people. So I was just so grateful, so grateful, full of gratitude. So and, grateful. and I would say that, no, go ahead. Okay, I will. I just want to commend you as a filmmaker because um, to find out so late on, and I don't want to give any spoilers, but the twist that the stuff was indeed just beans. Yeah. When yeah. you think it's going to be more than that, and we spend this whole movie thinking, what is going to be the stuff? What is the stuff? What is the and, stuff? And like, yeah. what is life if it's not just beans? A can of beans. I mean, open up a real can of beans, you know? That's not a phrase, but if, if I were to say it like that, it sounds like it is. And you know so what I mean? so you took the words right out of my mouth. Exactly. If you were to say it that way, it does sound like a phrase. Yeah. And, and I wanted to say, too, like, I love so much that you... You know, you don't know it's beans until you know it's beans at the end. But what you do is there is that you I, I think this is and I uh, maybe it is intentional. I'm, it is an intentional. It's an homage to Pulp Fiction where every everything time they, you're about to ask if it was intentional. Yeah. It's so intentional. Every oh, time they open up the can it goes for everyone at this room. Yeah. yeah every yes, time they absolutely. open up the can, it's it's not a gold light, it it is a brown light showing on people's face when they look in the can. Intentional. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um yeah, because beans are brown. Um and Pulp Fiction did that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I and yeah, so I'm so grateful. We can talk more about it, but yeah, it is about a can of beans, but it's also about like the way the history of blinds and the blinds that we hang in our house. And vertical blinds yeah. even because yeah. I mean there's so much there and we have so many great films here, so let's get into each like one. Like for of them. me, yeah. it was just the mother in that story it was just I mean, it was amazing and I appreciate you for being vulnerable. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Thanks. So yeah, and thank I would. You. I would be remiss if I didn't bring up the tears in your eyes currently. Just for and, any audio listeners. Right. Just so for the I'm, audio I'm listeners. I'm tearing up. I'm not crying fully, but I am tearing up. No, you're tearing up in like a way that make, is making your uh, muscles bigger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my arms much stronger. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'd love to talk about myself now. Please, That's okay. please, please. Of go course, ahead. I just felt the urge. I said, "Okay, time to go." Oh, Brid- oh yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. you guys no. ever have that? It was, you know, kind Absolutely. of. I, I call it an identity burst, where I say, "I must discuss yeah, myself." I'm actually working on a film oh, that kind of discusses God. that. You are, bit. yeah, kind of a little bit. That's just interesting. Diving in. Sometimes, uh, it, uh, would I, if I could talk about myself for a moment, the oh, okay. uh, the blue. <laughs> It's it's sort of a it's like a blue balls but for not talking about yourself yeah. and um, it to sounds us, similar to the the pain that that men say they feel when when they when they can't ejaculate when they when they need to it it hurts it physically hurts me when there's yeah. something I need yeah. to say about me and I and I and I don't always get the space to do that so I fully empathize with that and I understand exactly. there's room for it and I, I think that's something that's taken me a long time to learn is there's room for me to talk about myself and there's room for me to know that when I'm not talking about myself, it is an injustice towards who I am, my identity, my experience and my project that I've worked Mm -hmm. on. So you must splurge. I'm going to splurge my identity right now. And I want to talk about it. Um, uh, my name is, uh, Zachy Marks and I am the director of the horror film, the thing in the woods, whose name we don't know. Such Mm -hmm. a powerful statement. Yeah, about woods in general. Exactly. It's it's and and that and it, again, we are kind of talking about the whole movie here. So please, if you haven't seen the film, go check it out. It's only thirty five dollars on Amazon Prime, and I really hope you enjoy it. Isn't Vidiots playing it for eighty five dollars a ticket? Vidiots is playing it for eighty five dollars a ticket. Vidiots is a really cool indie little theater mm. in. Um, uh, Let's not actually talk about Vidiots. You you go ahead. Okay, great. I just, 
I'm sorry. We ha- I have beef with that place. Okay. Just, okay, no worries. I like it. I mean, they made an exception for me that I can profit off my film there, which is really cool. They're it's a like non-profit. The first time, and I feel like indie yeah. filmmakers, especially indie filmmakers working with A24, need to speak on that. Exactly. Yeah, no, just I just had a bad experience. There. Okay, cool. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to talk. I I was screaming at the movie theater, and they kicked right. me out. Oh, you were kicked out of that screening of Cool uh, Runnings, remember? Cool Runnings, and I said, this is bad acting. This is fake. Well, I do think this that, that really, when really men fake. are... was fake because you didn't believe screening. they were actually sledding. Yeah, I thought they weren't sledding. And this is a f- completely fake story. Mm-hmm. It's not I on understand. Them, it's on you, but uh, so the thing in the woods whose name we don't know, right, is my film, and it is a really scary film. If I were to be so humble, I'd call it scary. I think it's much more than that, but I'm being humble. Scary because I saw myself. Yeah, yeah, and that's what you know. It, it is you know we shot it. Uh, we shot it in uh, 30 days uh, in Nova Scotia in the mm-hmm. woods. And we only we only had a budget of eight million dollars, and we 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 worked, we hustled. You know, it, it is people don't consider uh, filmmaking an Olympic sport, but we definitely put in the effort of an athlete. An under know? ten mil movie is an Olympic sport, and yeah. you need to. Everyone at home needs to hear that. I yeah, wore absolutely. tennis shoes on set because I was walking so much. That's and insane. that's the sign of, of a director who's engaged yeah, exactly. and who's invested in the product. And I also want to commend you for, we've seen a lot of horror films that utilize um, the monster as a symbolism for mental illness. Yeah. And you were the first film that I've seen in recent memory to uh, have the monster symbolize being um, sort of anxious and uh wanting things to be a little organized not yeah. quite ocd but someone who wants things to be neat and clean yeah somebody that would say i have ocd as almost a joke as a yeah, passive uh, kind of a, uh, yeah them, yeah like uh yeah so the, to me the monster was the type of person who says that they're a neat freak but they're actually just bossy that's what i can and i the think monster. that's a yeah. huge monster for yeah, all yeah, of yeah, us yeah yeah and i and again i'm not addressing people with obsessive compulsive disorder no. that is not what i wanted to talk about because that's not experience and that is a real struggle what of the course. struggle is is people who use their attitude and their behavior um to basically control the way other people live and it was you know it's funny when you look back and you see in the movie oh i was talking about this the whole time yeah. i was mm-hmm. talking about my first ad and i didn't realize that <laughs> what an and ex- yeah. yeah and crazy experience i was talking about my first ad micah and she on was on the film on the film it turns out and i it's crazy because i can show you pictures of the monster i can show you pictures of her and they look almost exactly the same well i was wondering i was going to ask you why the monster always is wearing black with a little earpiece yeah and then, did well, yeah, the Micah monster ever having a monster on set about mm-hmm. that uh micah had a lot of things to say and micah said them all into her microphone i don't know why i don't get a microphone but it was really cool that she had mm-hmm. one. I just think it. I she was amazing, and we got the yeah. movie done, and she's incredible. I it's just things you learn after, you know. Uh-huh. And of and course, of course. I texted her and I said, "Oh my god, I'm just realizing. I think there's a little bit of you in the monster." And she said, "Yeah, I know. My picture was up in hair and makeup. Like I I didn't yeah. know this at the time. So it was fascinating. But you I don't know how the, the I picture wonder who, got there. Yeah, I, I have no who clue. Gave them that that well, there. I didn't have a printer. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I no, don't know. No, but someone gave them that. I have no clue who like would have done that. They printed it, but they were told. So it. the direction comes from somewhere. That's so it's interesting so that that happened that oh, way. You know, it was just a really interesting set because we were shooting um, day for night. Uh, when we needed to in Nova Scotia, but it was that time of year where it's always day. And so we had to kind of shoot day for night constantly. So why Nova mm. Scotia, if you don't mind me asking? Nova Scotia. Because the tax incentive is nothing there. No. So that's why it's the worst tax incentive. And I just wanted to prove that I don't, um, I'm not controlled by the government. I'm not controlled by taxes. Yeah. So I went mm. where it was actually the worst possible. We paid fees for every single thing. Mm-hmm. We, I, we had a breathing fee. Like we, depending on the air, they would monitor our air. And they yeah. would charge us how That's much air we so would so beautiful. Wow. And I was saying, because I'll pay it. I'll pay it all because mm-hmm. I don't believe that this even matters. But to have that attitude and still do it under 10 is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And that was it. And, and that's, we were tight, you know, it was really, really good. So, mm-hmm. but that's my film. Yeah. And, and my urge has been quelled. But so. It was a beautiful film. And I think it really spoke to a generation. And yeah. for me, um, I'm it, waiting for the generation to come, but I think it will speak to a generation. Course, generation. That's what we're doing mm-hmm. as filmmakers. Yeah. When it attaches to that generation, they're just going to be so grateful it's there. Yeah. And yeah. I, I applaud you and I want to recognize you for that. And I feel it and I see it. Thank you. Okay. Dirty, disgusting Absolutely. queen. Your turn. Wow. We have this dynamic that's just palpable. And I... <laughs> 
I really appreciate having a female um, filmmaker Every in the I space. Every time I see you at Soho Malibu, I go, my dirty, disgusting queen. Yes, and I say my disgusting, filthy little gremlin. Um, and we sort of have this chemistry that is something that only women can really um, relate to and experience. Um, and yeah. that does lead into, uh, and you understand, I'm sure, and you yeah. understand, I'm I, sure. I don't yeah. want to say, like, I get it, but I do understand and empathize. You do understand, you empathize. Yeah. And that's what a great filmmaker does. But my name is Evan Rachel McAdams, Michael Murray. And I am the director of Silent Wife. And it is a film that, of course... Um, uh, do, uh, we follow the journey of um, the wife of all of the founding fathers. And we, of course, in real life, they had different wives, but we see all of their marriages through um, one actress who was fantastic, and she plays all of the wives of all of the founding fathers. And um, we were very intentional in this. She doesn't say a word. And so we were experiencing this through her lens and um, it's really a story, it's a human story and it's a story about what happens when you go after your dreams and when those dreams don't materialize because you're um, uh, so in quiet. a, yeah, because you're so quiet, you can't really um, articulate what it is that yeah. you want so we we relied a, a lot on on the story to articulate for her right? i mean it was such an eye-opening film sorry. for me i mean yeah sorry to speak over you no, i just please I, please i want to i want to just acknowledge that like it has never crossed my mind that there's people in the world that aren't heard and it blew my mind that there's people in the yeah, world for sure or there you know, are and, and, and i'm just saying and i'm saying i just that's it's just crazy to me that there's people in the world that are trying to speak and, they're not and that's exactly what i was trying to speak yeah to. and that's what and then i'm just saying i'm saying mm -hmm. that's the experience that i had no for sure it's crazy I feel, so it was cool to see that. absolutely yeah, i feel shaning woodley's performance as uh benjamin franklin's wife um yes me, of, of all of their core. believe it or not that was shane lane woodley in all of those relationships can uh -huh. i tell you the colonoscopy of a performance that was it cleared me out exactly Both sides. Never, exactly it, it you, you took the out. words right out of my mouth it was a colonoscopy of the soul Truly. and she really took that on and she developed the idiosyncrasies that each of the wives of the founding fathers famously had you know the wife yeah. of john adams was always washing her hands and um, the wife of george washington was always sewing and so yeah and and i don't want to belabor this point but i do think and i don't want to correct you but i do think you're talking about the preparation for colonoscopy and not necessarily the colonoscopy itself <laughs> because that is indeed that is indeed something entering you that is indeed something being changed in your well, body i think I it believe, could work I mean, I the actually, performance for me was like a, can, a camera going up my rectum and looking around i'd actually like to make a statement that i stand corrected okay i think i always use the term colonoscopy like it's a clean out but really the clean out happens before <laughs> <laughs> And that's, I think, such an apt metaphor for pre and post production. And I'm yeah. a silent if wife. I'm, if I'm permitted to make a little joke, I I don't really go into comedy, but I Great. but I would say that those. I'll let you know if it's okay. Go ahead, of right, of course, of course. Yeah. Um, I would say that those two situations are quite similar. You know, the yeah. agony of pre-production and the uh, agony of post-production. And so forgive me for my little joke. <laughs> that is quite funny. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to allow You're such a it. disgusting queen. When you explained it, it really helped. That's such an interesting Very take funny. and quite a humorous observation. Thank you so much. I yeah. think that so much of our lives can be articulated through comedy. And I find it as such Huge. a useful mm. tool to get to the heart of rock? it. I've, I've heard, heard of it, I've yes. I've heard of it, yeah. It's this show um, my grandparents used to watch, and it like it reminds me of like comedy in a way where y you just don't see it coming, and it's interesting. Yeah, that's exciting. That's very enthralling, and I, I for me, a show yeah. like that kind of captures what I imagine would be something of the zeitgeist feeling of laughter. And for me, I think that's really important these I, days. I was. Uh, I was in a situation with a woman who loved that show and we were watching that together and I really tried to absorb it and take it in. It was such an interesting slice of life in the mid 2000s to watch that. It was but, so interesting. It did follow the lives yeah. of, from what I hear, ordinary Americans, um, <laughs> like trying the best to, yeah. to follow their it's, dreams. For it's me, I, I mean, I was uh, yeah. friends with medical benefit situation. <laughs> 
You were on their insurance? <laughs> I was on their insurance. <laughs> like a girl friends. with a Netflix password, but it's for insurance. Yeah. yeah. It's for, I, was, I was just. And I, and I think we've all been yeah. there. Yes. Certainly, um, I've certainly been well, there. Well, the she past. was talking. She had mentioned that she had watched the show. I didn't watch it with her. But for me, it just sounded like the American story kind of capture sure. in such a romantic and silly way which I think is magnanimous to the current events almost and tantamount to what's going on in America. Totally. I, I will say the color scheme was a mess and I couldn't, I don't know. I don't know if they'd ever color corrected that thing because I was trying to watch it and I just couldn't, I, I couldn't relate to the colors. Mm. That's the only problem for me. Yeah. Please, please. So right. oh, yes. go ahead. Uh, it thanks. seems as though you had a question. I want to commend you for not talking about yourself for this long, you know, thanks. because because it's it's hard and I mm -hmm. certainly couldn't have no so. it's and, and sometimes I make myself do it once a month I, I think it's a really good idea it's kind of like morning pages yeah. once a month you make sure that you give 20 minutes about not talking about yourself it's mm. really hard it's really challenging yeah. but the other side is so rewarding mm. because I would have never known your name sure sure, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sure. and now I know it so my film um, is uh, called men in a hole uh, it's a beautiful story. Uh, two best friends go out to on a fishing trip, but they accidentally both fall into separate holes. And it's kind of a beautiful story about what do we do on the edge of life? And what do we do? What do we do? What are male friendships at the base of them? Mm. Are we carnal? Are we carnivorous? Are we... Carnal? Carnal? Are we dangerous? Are we a carnival? Are we a carnival? Which is something they start. You watched it. You saw the dream sequence at the carnival. Yeah. So it's it's amazing. I've I've been hearing um, that a lot of the clips have been going viral on TikTok, which is really fun because no matter where you are in the movie, it kind of still makes sense. All you need to understand is these two men are stuck in a hole. Yeah, um, and I think it was such a great comment on on as you said, male friendships and how neither of them they. I, both of them could have gotten out of the hole if they oh, wanted three to. Feet, three feet of a hole. They could have gotten out of the hole, hole if they wanted their to. Their heads were poking out. But yeah. they were afraid of their head um, reaching the other man's genitals as they climbed out. So it's sort of a uh, a, a real um, 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 how do what's the word to grapple with? Homoerotic. Homoerotic. To yes, with to grapple with homoeroticism in such that, a way and the phobia of that even. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So, yeah. So it's three feet holes and a lot of the movie is them discussing how they're going to get out without going near each other's channels, <laughs> which I thought was so interesting because for me, you know, I've run into this with my friends is when you're on the beach, one of your one of you guys have a towel and you're sitting one way and one of you wants to put the towel next to it, but the umbrella is there. So you end up putting your towel a little farther down and all of a sudden you're lying right next to the guy's dick. Yeah, it's it's a thing where where you have to consider, you know, what's going on under the surface here? Does he notice what I'm thinking? Am I thinking weird? Uh, are these thoughts wrong? Are they th yeah. these thoughts right? Is a staggered towel just a staggered towel or is it something more? Exactly. Well, well, exactly. Well, well. So, yeah, it's a two and a half hour film. It's fantastic. Um, we had such good actors. Where did you shoot it? We shot that up in uh, San Luis Obispo wine country where That's they great. shot Sideways. Yeah. Um, we use the same sets as Sideways, but Doug the outdoor set, in the hole. Yeah, just yeah, outside, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just there was a wine set. barrel probably in one yes. section. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's my film. Um, and uh, we got Paul Dano and uh, my cousin to play the two roles. Um, how do you guys feel about my cousin in it? Uh, well, I, I guess well, we, we can talk shop here. I would love course, to. You know, of course. Why not? To I found other, your whatever. cousin quite interesting in the role. I did. Yeah. I think He's such like a raw nature to him. And right. What totally. I, 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 I think my bigger question is, what did you think of your cousin? Because I would say 95% of it is coverage of Paul Dano. So I ended up having to cut my cousin. <laughs> Well, Basically, I mean, completely out of the right. Movie. No, you but I shoulder, wouldn't say he's great completely shoulder, out. His great shoulder. Well, his great essay, dirty the too. essence of your cousin is felt, mm -hmm. um, yeah. especially in some of the wild lines that seem to be caught, mm -hmm. um, and you left Cer those in. Certainly wild, because he didn't seem to be mic'd either. No, we only had one mic. Uh, <laughs> my cousin was did that a have creative a, choice, or it, it became a logistical choice. It yeah. was at the beginning. Didn't want I gave audio. my cousin. A microphone and he was kind of making choices and for me 
let's be honest. I mean, who doesn't? I don't like improv. I have spent yeah. no. years, years, three months, really, writing the script. Yeah. And putting everything, you know, the, this is what people don't understand when you're an art tour, when you are a writer, director. You've got to give everything of yourself to your script. Yeah. You've got to yeah. give. It's a colonoscopy. You've got to have sex with it. You've got to clear it out. You've got to have a colonoscopy. At some point with these scripts, you got to put interior, <laughs> exterior, you've got to put all these labels yeah. and stuff. And so when somebody improvises with my words, I get a little upset. Right. It's like, yeah. oh, you think this how, this is how the scene should have gone? Then why didn't you come up with this? Exactly. Why do you get to come Where's in right now movie? and change yeah. this? Yeah, these commas movie? were painstakingly placed. Yeah. And to emphasize a different word even, it, it feels, I do feel it. I do feel it hurting. Yeah. Um, but I, I do respect the great um, improvisers of our time, and I, I respect sure. their contributions. I went to a show at um, I.O. West once, and I, mm. and I found it spectacular. It, That's incredible. What they were watching doing. Watching improvisers do their craft is, it's like watching a magician. It's absolutely magic. And I would say almost every time I've seen an improv show, it has been spectacular. And I always I always do check. It's pretty consistently spectacular. I they, always ask because I, I'm just curious because sometimes I do feel like sometimes I'm like, was that? Did and it, think that's that what before? I've always wondered and you know, just between us, I do think some of it has to be written. I think it because is. Because how is it that funny that consistently every single improv show you go see? And yeah. I do think that is the dirty secret of Hollywood, of course, is that um, lots of things that appear to be of the moment are quite planned and quite yeah. painstakingly rehearsed. Um, I did have a question for the room, if that's okay. Yeah, of course. Um, I think so. It depends on the question. Well, depends, okay, yeah. great. I'll, I'll, I'll see if this is acceptable for this space. I'll let you know. I wanted to know, because um, we all have directors and writers, of course, who we look up to. Absolutely. I was wondering if there was someone in your life or something in your life that has been an influence on you that isn't someone from Hollywood that is um, uh, uh, perhaps it could be anything it could be um, just something that inspires you something that drives you um, I will say that well, for can, me one second I'll allow it that's okay yeah and, okay and, good. and wow a really good question and I want to thank you for such an enlightening interesting Tasteful question. Yeah, it's yeah. really tasteful. Really it's tasteful. left me gobsmacked and it's left me enthralled. Mm -hmm. I, w I, don't, I don't know what you mean by that. We'll Great. Discuss. Clear out. Camera in. Anyway. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm happy to answer first. Please, I please. Um, was deeply inspired by a mini fridge in my mother's basement. Um, wow. The way it was sort of the chill that emits from it is similar to so many feelings that we have yeah. on the daily and on um, on set and on um, on in our friendships, you know, uh, you can be walking around along the garage and everything can be perfectly normal. And then you open one door and it's cold. And mm. that's something that it, it just gave me this instance of life can change in an instant. Yeah. Life can Absolutely. change at any moment. And it's the spontaneity of that, that I think drives a lot of my work. So that's totally. what I would say. Yeah. I mean, I found like, inspiring multiple things for me but i'd say um the holiday halloween mm. is really interesting to me and i, I saw that in a can of stuff mm -hmm. i definitely Thank saw you. the Halloween, and it was just like yeah. the way we influence the way the, like because it's about um sarah deve and she's the inventor of the blinds right and yeah. she um mm -hmm. and then she has this can of stuff in right. her living room right um and she's worried <laughs> she's worried um about the onlookers into her house so she built these blinds because before what people don't realize is before blinds we had curtains and curtains were the only thing in america i don't understand how people don't realize that yeah because it's an easy predecessor yeah but people it's, don't it makes really... me actually really upset i'm like open your eyes people there used to be curtains where those blinds it's are ignorance. And the, they're it's the ignorance. unsung exactly. heroes of our our time and yeah. of previous times and we have to give respect to those previous generations Absolutely. yeah but i remember i was like i was living in highland park at the time and i had um an old historical home i was living in mm -hmm. and of course i did trick-or-treat which was like the first time because usually i'm like in a like a loft in brooklyn and it was yeah. my first halloween like having kids come to the door and um i felt i saw this kid in like a ninja turtles mask and i was like that's what sarah deep did 
she put a mask on her windows mm. and mm. the way that blinds are that and that leads to can of stuff and then the can of stuff was uh, inspired by a mixtape i found on the floor mm. um just uh, on the floor yeah i was um i found it on the floor um outside of cvs in oh i was going to ask inside or outside yeah that's right. such an interesting distinction you found it outside but you call it a floor i think that's such an <laughs> Such an interesting distinction. You think the ground? I would call it the ground if it wasn't inside a building. Mm, that's yeah. so interesting. But that's we think so differently. And yeah. I know you, you dirty, disgusting filthy, little dirty, girl. filthy girl. Um, you do see things differently because I know yeah. you quite well. I know you refer to walls as up floors. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you for that's exactly what I do. But I will say, like, I, here I am writing the film. So it's like Sarah Deeb is thinking of the invention of the blinds. Meanwhile, I get this 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 disc and I have it in my, in my car mm -hmm. and I'm like, will I ever listen to it? Yeah. And that's her looking at the can. Mm, that's and I was right. like, Oh my God. Cause I, I just didn't have enough to write a script about a girl inventing the blinds was so hard. Cause there wasn't a lot there. Mm -hmm. We purchased the life rights, um, of the original Sarah Deeb, um, which was like a huge battle to get those life rights and to adapt that from her biography. Um, but then at some point I was like, we need something else. And I was like, we need like a something dangling. Like what is here? And, and then I was like, I keep seeing this like mixtape and I finally put it in my car and it was unlistenable. But what I think I heard was maybe a little bit of the Cheetah Girls or Chris Brown. <laughs> you brought it, didn't you? Can we play it? It was a movie, yeah. And your movie is based on what you think you heard in this tape. Yeah, well, it's That's like, amazing. it's That's amazing. like Chekhov's gun sure in what way or done dove yeah. it's something where it's like you're always thinking about it throughout the play you're like is this there the check off gun yeah the check dove. off gun i think it's gun i think it, yeah but it's like it's like we, what's happening while we're mainly worried about this thing which mm -hmm. is the blinds but like also what's in the can of stuff what's on the cd mm -hmm. yeah sorry yeah, long do, answer i sorry i did i did want to hear the cd yeah if, we have it here can you play it yeah please i'll just put it in tonight Beans. Okay, girls, we're in Paris. Let's go to the tower. Beans. Well, God bless the USA. So it's like, what was in that CD doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, hard listen for none sure. of that matters because it's just beans. Um, I would say the thing that inspired me, mm -hmm. you know, the, wait, the question was... The thing that not from art that inspired you. The non-art, yeah, inspiration. Uh, I grew up in New York City on a street full of characters. I grew up in, I what guess, part? Upper West Side, but the only working class street in the Upper West Side. Oh, sure. Right. Yeah. I'm sure it was yeah. a working it class was, street. And, and there was a, a, a big, interesting group of Italians that would sit right outside my house and I got to know them and they were neighborhood friends and there was a guy named Sal and I'm not a I'm not an actor and I'm a director but he, I used mm -hmm. to see him he's this old guy and he used to go how you doing how you doing how you doing that is so how insane funny and, and there was silly. a there was a and you say you're moment. not an actor you really became that Thank character you. I mean I see him he's real we used to play checkers together he used to wear a, a, a a white but uh, a button down undershirt. Which right, was that so character of Sal is so clear in my it's head. It's so clear. And then there was another woman that she was there. Her name was Maria. And she'd say, Sal, Sal, what are you doing with the kid? These are, are inspired? absolute characters. Were you, these, these are just really, such these are, I've characters. never such characters. There were such crazy characters. This is like such a character. Stuff that you wouldn't see in movies or TV. It's just characters now, that were so so real. Yeah. Were you inspired by them or those sentences and those phrases they were saying? Uh, I guess both, you know, because the sentences are coming from them. So I guess I was inspired by their brains and their spirit. Mm -hmm. And I was inspired when they moved. They moved. Their uh, bodies. They, yeah. No, they moved out. They were, they were, they, uh, they moved oh. out. This um, is based on your short film when your parents bought the street that they were living yes, on. Yes, my parents bought the street. They turned it into a Lululemon street. A huge street. One yeah. big street. The Lululemon. corporate street for yeah, Lululemon. Exactly. So you guys <laughs> I have, have been there. It's quite street. nice. The espresso stand they have um, is it's and lovely. It's only $15. Yeah. There's a Cortado named after me there. Oh, my so God. I have great. a Cortado named after you. I mean, it's a pinch me store. moment. That's a pinch me uh, moment. A little lemon right? Story. I mean, that's, that's crazy. And they have so street. many different kinds of Cortados that yeah. that's uh, that's 
great. I've never seen so many cortados. Store. For a yeah. place that sells yoga pants, I've never seen so many cortados. I mean, athleisure is, so is the new thing. It is, it is. But that's mm-hmm. just kind of what inspired me. These real gritty salt of the earth people. Mm-hmm. Real people. Like disgusting. The, this for yeah. me is sounding like the show that somebody talked to me about called New Girl. Have you guys heard or seen New Girl? Uh, it's another show my grandparents I have, used to watch. So this it sounds a lot similar to this show where they're kind of dissecting real people in Los Angeles. And I think that's just so interesting you know it's just so i do love new girl a lot it's the story of a woman who drives who moves into an apartment of all men and they all drive each other slowly insane until Mm. the final season they descend into madness a silent wife it's dante's inferno silent wolf i i i I don't prescribe to new girl i have watched it i think it's if i don't think it's believable i Mm. lived in a house Mm. um in Echo Park with uh, eight guys and one girl, and we were all absolutely in love with her. So I just don't think it's relatable that men could live with women and not be in love with them. Yeah, I see that. I yeah. understand And I that. understand that. So, tired so and old. What, That's what makes it so surreal. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Absolutely. It's kind of a farce, if you will. It's, Interesting. It's, okay, then I'll watch it. If, if I, I didn't know it was a farce. If I knew it was a farce, then I probably would Yeah, watch it's it. kind of Kafka-esque. But what's oh, so great. funny is we're talking about like what's so interesting about people right but like these movies that all four of us are here for these movies are about ideas oh i I did just want to bring speaking of kafka-esque i'd love to talk about the things in our life that are kafka-esque because there's so many of course i I mean mean, yes of course it's it's picking apples in an orchard there's so many it's exactly i i i would say that most filmmakers and forgive me to make a little joke here um most filmmakers uh go to bed as children, and they wake up as Gregor Samsa. Yeah. Kafka esque. Absolutely. And it's absolutely Kafka esque. And he turned into a monstrous vermin. <laughs> you don't think <laughs> yes. of just as the character before the. Okay. Oh, we got a little loud and rowdy there. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, we got to dig it I mean, loud doing the rowdy. dishes is Kafka esque for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah, sure. I would the say. The monotony of it. Yeah. The, I would say doing the mail is like Kafka esque, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, doing the mail, it, uh, ordering on Amazon. Yes. Yes, Kafka. exactly. Kafka-esque. It's very Kafka esque. Asking exactly. your parents to name another drink after you because people are throwing the cortados at the movie screens. Kafka esque. Exactly. Very yes. Kafka esque. Yeah. Absolutely. There, I mean, it's it's just for me, it's picking rice in a rice field. It's of it's plentiful. Yes. It's very exactly. plentiful. For, for me, me sorry. No, no for, you. For, you. for you. For you. For you. When the sun sets and there's still a little bit left, that's Kafka-esque. Kafka-esque. Yes. That's incredible. Um, what's very Kafka-esque to me is when you're talking to someone, you grab your phone and you are about to send a text and you don't know who you were sending the text to. Mm-hmm. Kafka-esque. That's Kafka-esque. Yes. And you're like, wait, what was I just about to do? Yeah. Absolutely. So going back to things that influence you, I think something that has hugely, hugely influenced me is the idea of the view from Griffith Park. Mm. Never been, mm. um, but I I imagine I, highly recommend it. I I imagine it's a really good view of Los Angeles. It's low key pretty, yeah. Yeah. So for me, I I love the idea of people staring down at people, but mm. they're not kings, and for a moment they get to feel like kings. That's scary. Or at least that's how I imagine it working. <laughs> if I may ask, where where do you live? I live in Koreatown. Okay, okay. So it's uh forty. It's it's about fourteen minutes from it's you. It's about fourteen minutes from mm-hmm. me. It's just right up Vermont. I'm right off of Vermont in Koreatown, so it's pretty easy. Um, but I just won't go because I don't want to ruin the mirage that I have created in my brain or noggin, if you will. Yeah. Um, you are yeah. a pretty famous guy. I feel like. Oh please. I do feel like out of our whole class, um, you. You've been doing a lot of indie filmmaking for a while. Yes, I've been doing a lot of I followed your career a little bit. So I started when I was about 10. You had a Wells Fargo pick of the week, right? Yes, I had a Wells Fargo pick of the week. A bank account. Yes. My... When I was 11, my bank account was chosen as the Wells Fargo. And as a filmmaker, week. that means like good things. And, and I and no. I just have to say, and I don't, I, I, I am known for calling truth to power. I think you the really amount of are. people. You so are. The amount of people that got their identity stolen from bank account of the week <laughs> was so egregious. It was a crazy idea <laughs> for Bank of America to post. Wells Fargo. This is America. the bank account of the week with the name and the number. The name and the, and the number. And the amount in it code, and all the, the information. Pin, and like the password. It was crazy. I mean, to bracket. me, it's it's about the nakedness of capitalism, Absolutely. right? Yeah, and totally. I do find beauty in that, but I also see that there are logistical concerns. Absolutely. <laughs> 
Absolutely, but all, all to say that I'm a big fan of your work, and I'm I'm, I'm literally a big fan of everyone's work. At I'm, this table. Uh, I mean, for me, this has been breathtaking. It's yeah. been exactly. Well, are you guys excited for the summit? Are you guys excited? This for is going to be huge. We should tell people. Yeah. So, so if you become part of the A24 class of 2024, um, you get to go to a creator summit. You get the apartment on the Lower East Side. Yeah. Lower, you yeah. get the um, the creator summit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Entry fee, and you get a jacket, and you get a moment. Where you get to stand in an apartment and Noah Baumbach can come in and say whatever he wants to you for however long. What did he say to you guys? Uh, actually, we should talk about this because they what? tell it's like we kind should. of like a Dumbledore moment where it's like, um, like what house are you in? But like it, it, it gets really deep and I feel like it's really vulnerable to share. But we and should. Of course. And, and it's sort of, uh, I mean, there's, of course, that old superstition where if you tell people what Noah Baumbach told to you, it doesn't, it doesn't come, come true. true. And, and it comes fact, true to them. Yeah. <laughs> It's fact, like, it goes true to yeah, them. it's like you have <laughs> to be careful to with them. what you say that Noah said to you because yeah. you don't want to give it away. You don't want yeah. to give it away if it's something good. Um, well, I could Maybe we, give mine away. We could talk yeah. about in hypotheticals. If, hypothetically, oh, yeah, and I can give mine away too. You can please go ahead. Hypothetically, uh, Noah said a plague on your house. Okay. Okay. Wow, so interesting. And I just felt. Uh, I mean. I don't want to give that away. I don't course, want I mean, that so to happen to anyone. So vintage. Exactly. And so exactly. For him to say that it's just so moving. It's also very like yeah. Nora Ephron of him to say. Yes. And I would say it's so, Kafka esque in a way. Very Kafka esque. Yes. Very almost yeah. the definition of it. What I would say for me, what Noah told me in the room, and well, here's the deal. I'll give it away too. Noah told me I was going to die tonight. Hmm. Mm. And I'm giving it away. Maybe I don't. You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm good with it. Um, wow, that's yeah, really powerful. Because we, and we had that meeting six months ago, and he told me it's going to happen. Tonight. Yeah, I wonder what he meant by that. That's so. I really don't know. And it's that's the thing. He's so wise. Like it, it could mean so many things, right? He said yeah. you're going to get attacked by a, a wild man with a knife, and so many things. Yeah, it's mean. like what does that mean? What's the symbolism? Is he is he is he hearkening back to? Ingmar Bergman, is he hearkening back to Truffaut or is he hearkening yeah, back yeah. to For me, well, that sounds know? like Trump. It sounds like maybe he's talking uh, about also, Trump's return. I will say, it like, you be. have to it think could about be. it from A24's standpoint is they're instilling emotions into writers and directors that they believe in. Yeah. Like, they want you, you just came off of this huge thriller horror that you made. Yeah. They want you to live in fear because something that comes out of you as a creator at, when you are in fear is special. Right. And I mean, a lot of people say that the A24's directors are the cows and uh, the studio is the milk machine, right? They suck. We're, yeah. we're the teats they, they strap that. onto, you know? And yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it just everyone's told me that. You know? Yeah. Course, Noah and- came into my room and he, um, he said, hypothetically, he said, every time you bring order to your life, I'm going to make it messy. Mm. And every time you go to sleep, everything you did to clean your house will be messy. And I feel as if that is the studios milking the yeah. cow that is, if I, for a second, get my shit together, I may not be able to create things like can of beans being, yeah. being like this beautiful reveal at the end of a movie. Yeah, like, that's amazing. If I right. ever wrote a to-do list, sometimes I just lose it. And I'm like, mm-hmm. was that Noah? Ugh. So mine was so different. Uh, he just showed me stills from the Barbie movie being on set, and he just kind of talked about how fun it was shooting that movie. That's if I'm being quite honest, I kind of thought that's what it was going to be mm. for me. I thought we were going to have kind of a discourse. Yeah. <laughs> just like sit around I, and I thought it was also be much believed here. that he was going to so sort of, we, it was going to it be It was a more oracle yeah. si- oracle prophetic for you guys. So Yeah, it was. Yeah. He was. It was not like that for me I actually heard he all. does that to one student in each class so it's interesting that happened to all of us because i would say that i actually have met noah before at at, at an event Congrats. um that my parents uh put on um but was it the oscars yeah <laughs> <laughs> your parents own the oscars my right? parents own the oscars just they the are... awards just the medal for the awards <laughs> exactly they them, they're no them. they're not they're not the academy i'm not a Nepo no, baby no. they are the yeah. ones who manufacture the 
the Oscars yeah. themselves. They do the Oscars and, so and missiles. Right? They're welders. They're cast makers. They do the yes. Oscars. They do missiles. They're they gold do pourers. They make cafeteria gold cloths lunch trays as well. Yeah. That's something wow. they do. They have those big helmets that you know very medieval. work very working right. esque job i mean they're not know? working there they own it they yeah. own the Kafka. factory they own the means of labor if, if you will they yeah. own the means of labor and okay but um, this is not about your parents this, this is, about is not you. about my Absolutely. parents this, this is, is hold space for that. this is about and thank you i was starting to get that feeling where i wasn't talking about me i was talking about um <laughs> yeah i was worried <laughs> my parents um uh so i met noah actually before and i felt that the noah we were talking to in that room was not noah really because I feel like it was a darker god or something. It, it was, I believe, an, a part of Noah that is only accessed um, in in certain situations because his eyes were sort of rolled to the back of his head, yeah. and he was in that shroud. And I would say that uh, I've met Noah before. That's not what he normally looks like. I would say he was pretty charismatic and shy, but I'm really? just not the same experience at all. Interesting. Was he in a robe for you? No, no. He was no wearing a flannel and... Uh, jeans. That's very interesting. That's weird. That's because very I interesting. thought when he was in that robe and he had his eyes behind his head and he was shivering a lot. Yeah. I thought he was just something like a juice cleanse or something. It was almost as if the, the things he said pained him to say, which is yeah. why I value that so was much. Was there that moment when, when he was speaking to you that he, he burped out a big bubble and then when he popped the bubble in the air, uh, the sound of a baby crying permeated the entire space? Mine wasn't a baby crying. Mine was, mine was a woman dying. Interesting. So that didn't ha that just didn't happen at all. He burped out a big bubble. Yeah, yeah and then it, when and it, it popped, it was the sound, the of, a sound of a car exploding. That was yours. yours was a car exploding. Mine was a yeah. car yours exploding. Yours was a baby what? A baby crying. And yours was a woman dying. Yeah. He was just talking about the process of marriage story for me most of the that's, time. Yeah. That's that's really so fascinating. Different. That's interesting. Different. What do you think that's fascinating? Is that, does that is that good for me or bad for me? I think we're gonna find out in a year. I, yeah, I which like... group of us is it, it was good for and which group of us it was bad for. Yeah, because it was exactly. plague, death. Dying tonight. What was yours? Um, He's going to ruin everything. He, right. touches, oh, yeah, he it, messes up everything filth, I touch. plague, and death. Yeah. Um, and possibly how, And filth, how fun and silly and Barbie movie was. Yeah. 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 It so I guess that's about. so interesting. We'll see how it unfolds. And we, we could find out soon. I know that the A24 um, Discomfort Summit is coming up where yeah. yes. they Absolutely. put all of their oh. filmmakers through uh, uncomfortable situations to access, like you yes. said earlier, that feeling of discomfort and unease. Yeah. yeah. So we're meeting in the LA Metro. <laughs> But Absolutely have incredible. none of the card machines work. And first. None of the cards machine none work. of the we card machines in, work. The cards machines don't work. Yeah, and so they have food, but right you passage. can't tell how long it's been out. It's sort of yeah. sandwiches with an unclear temperature. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They had Bo Burnham do it. I think a couple years ago. Oh my god. I know Bo. Yeah. I, love, so I know sweet. Bo. I think yeah. I know Bo. Yeah. Yeah. So Bo sweet. is so great and so awesome. Bo, Bo is great. so Bo sweet. Is I know Bo really well. Really transformative. So great. Really transformative guy. I actually call him Ba. I'm so close to him. I call him Bob, his real name. Oh, you go longer. Yeah, I go long. Bob Burnham. Bob. His real name is Bob Burnham? <laughs> Bob Burnham. Bob Burnham. They messed up when That's they That's honestly Hollywood's biggest secret. Him. I cannot yeah. believe you that just said so on this podcast. That, is, um, that Bo Burnham's uh -oh, real name is Bob Burnham. we're getting spicy. <laughs> well, Guys, this is... I have to say, like, I I will be indebted to you for the rest of my life. I will I will follow your career and the art you make for the rest of my life um, just because this experience of doing this together um, it's been it's been everything it's been to been me. foundational it's been completely yeah. gut-wrenching and almost sacrificial in its nature yes. for how I've yes. died my old self has yeah. been killed yeah. and a new Phoenix version of myself has it's been incredible. reborn and breathed upon the world, a fiery passion for film. Yeah. I'm, I'm a completely different creature now than I was when we started. And I would say that's Kafka. -esque. Mm -hmm. that's Kafka. I would say that's pretty Kafka. -esque. Hey, film boy, I've got a knife. Ah! <laughs> Don't! Don't! <laughs> it's gonna happen tonight. Oh my God. Don't! Hey, don't watch oh my out. God. His parents own pol uh, own Lululemon. My parents own the police. Yeah. Your parents is Joe Biden. <laughs> and by the way, I acknowledge you and thank you earlier. So you better not fucking kill me with a knife. I was nice to you, you fucking camera guy. Oh. You gotta fucking back off. Hey, back the fuck off, okay? Back the fuck off, you little plebe. Come on, dude. I thought you were crate trained, little bitch. 
This has been artists on artists on artists on artists answering the question. Now that's why they call it showbiz. Good night, Hollywood. Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists is an improvised Hollywood Roundtable podcast created and performed and produced by Kylie Brakeman, Jeremy Colhane, Angela Giratana, and Patrick McDonald. Music is by Gabriel Ponton. The opinions expressed on this podcast do not reflect the opinions of anyone who works on it, not even the performers, because this is an improvised podcast and we're stupid. Full video versions of AO, 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 A are available on YouTube, so please like and subscribe and leave us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, Hollywood. <laughs>